For regular videos on ancient cultures and forgotten civilizations, please subscribe. Ancient Egyptians manufactured stone vases for over 5,000 years. During this time, there is a rise and fall of different technologies and skill sets, materials and techniques, and changes in function and significance of stone vases in Egyptian society. This process is not linear, and yes, there are moments in the 5,000 year history that represent serious setbacks in the craft. These setbacks and the loss of previously honed skills fuel the pseudoscientific theories that push ideas of ancient lost high technology. The working of stone into vessels of various shapes and sizes was one of ancient Egypt's earliest specialized crafts. The oldest stone vessels that have been found are from the Badarian period, about 4500 to 3800 BCE, and were used as part of funerary offerings. They seem to have been made with some type of grinding stone, either operated by hand or in the form of a drill. They made vessels out of limestone, sandstone, and travertine, but in this period they also began working with hard stone like basalt. The results are impressive, but certainly not of the quality that would come later. Stone vessels from this period are rare, and rarer still for basalt. They are found in elite burials. The regular folks got regular pottery. Basic tools were used in this era. These included copper chisels, stone hammers, saws, and sand as an abrasive material. The technique of indirect percussion, which involves striking the vase with a hammer and chisel to shape and refine it, was rudimentary and created relatively simple designs with limited decoration. In the later pre-dynastic period, hard stone like granite and basalt began to be used sparingly for bowls and vases, but not yet for building or anything like that. During the early dynastic period, new technology emerged, like the rotary or bow drill, which allowed for harder stones like basalt, diorite, and granite to be hollowed out with greater proficiency. The shapes of vases during this period also evolved, with jars, bowls, and cylindrical vessels becoming more common. Stone vases of this time were mainly used to store oils, perfumes, and cosmetics, just as with cheaper vases. The fact that some are stone is indicative of the wealth and status of their owners, and were often used in burials to denote the owner's social status. From this point through the first part of the Old Kingdom, we see the industry at its high point. Materials like limestone, basalt, alabaster, diorite, granite, and schist were now in use, along with rarer materials, such as obsidian, rock crystal, and breccia, which were used to create high-quality luxury items. In the Old Kingdom, stone vases were produced in both royal and private workshops, and the overall production of stone vases was organized by a centralized governmental system. The government oversaw the procurement of raw materials, the distribution of resources, and the establishment of workshops for vase production. This centralized control ensured the maintenance of high-quality craftsmanship and allowed for the development of specialized skills among the craftsmen. Vases were used to store or transport water, wine, and other liquids, and the inscriptions and designs on these vases often indicated the contents and their intended recipients or their owners. Vases used in temple offerings also contained inscriptions and prayers or dedications to deities. Vases placed in tombs were offerings for the deceased, and they would contain inscriptions dedicated to the deceased. In other words, the inscriptions were written and this cannot be emphasized enough, by the people who used the stone vases and not by the people who made the stone vases. But yes, by the latter part of the Old Kingdom, as the government decreased in power and wealth, softer stone vases were being produced more than hard stone vases. The decline, which continued past the Old Kingdom, was caused by political instability and fragmentation, leading to a decrease in centralized control and organization, Everything was declining in quality at that time. The production of stone vases experienced a resurgence during the early New Kingdom. The range of shapes and sizes of stone vases expanded, with craftsmen creating more complex shapes. Inscriptions on stone vases also became more elaborate, incorporating prayers, spells, and hymns. Although the centralized control of the industry was not as strong as it was during the Old Kingdom, the quality of craftsmanship and innovation still flourished during this period. Since the production of stone vases was less centralized, a variety of regional styles and local influences in design began to emerge. The development of better tools in the early New Kingdom enabled craftsmen to achieve greater refinement. 
The early New Kingdom also saw innovations in the use of abrasive materials, with craftsmen employing new polishing agents, such as diorite, dolerite, and quartzite, to create smoother and better polished surfaces. <laughs> 